See, for the longest time I was debating on making this video because I felt like people were just going to say I was copying off a of video game donkey's video. But at this point, I don't give a fuck. Matter of fact, here's your thumbnail. Let's make this even more confusing. At the end of the day, me and Donkey are very different people because he is of Puerto Rican descent and I am fucking black. <laughs> now game critics have been around for a long time and a good amount of them are the main reasons for why I created chicken reviews in the first place. Angry joke, cadicorous, zero punctuation, super butter buns, and yeah, Donkey too. And I can go on and on about the creators who inspired me, but instead I would like to talk about why video game critics don't really mean shit at the end of the day. Now the reason I bring this up is because I feel like there are a lot of gamers out there who care way too much about a critic's opinion. To a point where their opinion on certain games are completely based on what a certain critic says about it. Now buying a game based off of what a critic says is nothing new. Because why would you risk spending money on a game that could be bad when you can just watch a critic talk about the game and then come to the decision on whether or not you want to buy it. And I have definitely done that before. I would not have touched The Witcher 3 if I did not watch Angry Joe's review back in 2015. And the fact that he gave it a 10 out of 10 made me even more curious to see if he was right. And it's crazy to me that if it wasn't for that review, I may have never had touched The Witcher 3. So I do understand fans who watch certain reviews as a deciding factor for whether or not to purchase a game. The problem I have are the people who take critics' opinions way too seriously. And the moment a game critic makes that one review that you don't agree with, all of a sudden they go from being their biggest fan to being their biggest hater. You wanna know why I like to call these people? Gamer Karens. So listen Karen, not everyone is going to have the same opinion as you. And that's fine. And as much as you don't want to admit it, you probably made some shit takes as well in certain games. And this is coming from the Sonic fan. Look, some people just need to realize that critics are just regular people at the end of the day. Literally anyone can become a video game reviewer. Now getting paid for it, that's a whole other story. I actually owe people money whenever they watch my videos. Now there are some people who believe that you don't need any credentials to review a game, but I absolutely disagree with that. Now I'm not saying in order for you to talk about a game, you need to know every nook and cranny about the game and then write a one hour video essay on why Cyberpunk 2077 is a tragedy. And that wasn't a jab, I actually like that video. But it's not necessary. You see, in my personal opinion, I believe you need to do at least one thing in order to be qualified to review you a game. You guys are with me, right? Okay? Okay. In order for you to, you're still with me, right? Okay. In order for you to review a game, you need to, you're still with me? Okay. You need to beat the goddamn game. Now, some people might see this as, well, duh, of course I'm going to beat the game if I'm going to talk about it. But I think you'd be very surprised with just how many video game critics don't do that. And to give you guys the greatest example of this, I would like to talk about my favorite IGN review of all time. So let's all travel back to 2008 when IGN reviewed Sonic Unleashed on the PS3 and Xbox 360. This review was something special. Now when this review came out, Sonic fans were fuming with rage. But shockingly, I was actually one of the few Sonic fans that wasn't really salty about this review. And the reason why is because this review did something beautiful for the gaming community. It was a review that was so bad that it somehow brought the gaming community closer than it has ever been. Because it wasn't just Sonic fans who hated this review. Even people who didn't even like Sonic looked at this review and was like, I mean, the game's not that bad, come on now. This was one of the few moments in history where Sonic fans and normal people got together to fight a common enemy in order to create peace on both sides. This review was the Lelouch v Britannia of our time. And I feel like it was this review that made fans start to take IGN a little less seriously, especially considering that the guy who reviewed the game didn't even finish the goddamn game. Now, I actually like Sonic Unleashed like quite a lot actually, but when people talk about their problems Problems with the game, especially with the Werehog, I 100% understand their criticisms. But you see, Cherwin, that's the difference between constructive criticism and just being bad at the game. And that is one of the main reasons for why I believe that whether you like a game or hate a game, you should at least beat the game in order to talk about it. And the reason why I say you should beat the game even if it's bad is because unlike the people who dropped it, someone who has suffered through all of that pain all the way to the end 
deserves to review it. And in my opinion, any critic who beats a game that they didn't like ends up having a way more entertaining review. And then at the end of the game, the characters that I wanted to play with are destroyed. They're gone. They're nothing. They're broken or dead. All of them are broken or dead. And all the new characters that you that I like in this game are dead and gone and broken. Are you, are you out of your mind? And since we're all on this topic, I might as well come clean to you guys. You'll probably never see a review of Death Stranding from your boy because I dropped it. And it's not like I had a lot to say about the game anyway. Plus, even if I did finish the game, something tells me that that review would have sucked anyway, because I found the game very boring and tedious. And that, my friends, is my flaw as a reviewer. I can review a bad game. Matter of fact, I enjoy reviewing bad games. But if I find a game boring as fuck, then I will probably never make a video out of it. I could have made a full review of Marvel Avengers, but I feel like it was more fitting to not even give the game attention and just talk about something else mid-review, just to show the audience how little I cared about it. Some people might feel blue ball because they didn't get a full review, but it just wouldn't fit my character if I did that. You see, at the end of the day, every critic has their own style of doing things and there isn't any reason we should judge them based on a certain opinion they have on a game. Though with that being said, I would like to call out Scott the Waz for a match at WrestleMania because me and him actually started around the same time and while I was busy doing acting and, you know, kissing women, he gained a million subscribers. So, um, uh, we gotta fight. It's just the way it has to be. I am a very jealous and petty person. And when I win, I want all of your subscribers. I could take your channel, but nah, I just want the clout. But I'll also be fair and let you pick the match. So what'll it be? Boxing? Sumo? Mud wrestling?